Hey, I'm Craig Lammer, and I'm an adult hepatologist at Indiana University. I'm also the executive director for the Autoimmune Hepatitis Association. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Sahad Ranama. Uh, he's a dermatologist here at Indiana University. He's been so gracious to sit down with us and talk, us, talk to us a little bit about vitamin D, as well as risk in autoimmune hepatitis and immunosuppression. So, Sahad, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me, Dr. Lammer. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And, and you know, we, we have had some questions come in from our organization and members. Um, there's been some information out looking at vitamin D, um, and vitamin D may be being linked, to, at least as a correlate, with COVID severity or COVID-19 outcomes. Seeing that there's been some trends where patients are in low vitamin D levels, maybe having worse outcomes. And this has actually been a scene with a few studies, um, and the data seems a little bit soft, but there has been some correlation in seeing that vitamin D levels where they're lower in the Northern Hemisphere may improve as you get close to the equator and have been tied to lesser mortality rates. So we thought it would be important to maybe hear from a dermatologist perspective, particularly with our patients being on chronic immunosuppression, and how we approach vitamin D as well. Yeah, that's a great question, and it's something that, is good to just discuss in general uh, here in Indiana, but like you said, in the Northern Hemisphere, we have patients that are at risk for just having low vitamin D in general. We see that a lot. And we think it is helpful just for general health to get the vitamin D, so we know it's important. <clears throat> so what do you tell a patient and how to get more vitamin D? Is it really important the sun and is that the only way or are there other ways to do that as well? So we think the safest way is to use to get vitamin D is to supplement it either through your diet, through vitamin D fortified foods, including dairy products, but also you can get over the counter vitamin D supplements as well. These supplements are best absorbed with a fatty meal. So again, dairy or protein sources like meats and things like that will help avocado will help help you absorb the vitamin D. But let's say that you either didn't want to get it that way through the diet, but you also were mindful about the skin cancer risk. We still tell our patients that if you're wearing sunscreen, you can still get your vitamin D and still have your sun protection. And that's, we're really fortunate that's what the studies show. That's great. And so maybe just to clarify for some of our newer members, but we think that at least some of our chronic immunosuppressive medications that we use specifically in autoimmune hepatitis may increase risk of non melanoma skin cancer. Can you expand upon that? Yeah, um, I think it's a good idea for all patients on any type of immunosuppression to be mindful of their time in the sun because we've noticed that patients who have immune suppression, whether it's for chronic autoimmune hepatitis or for other reasons, do seem to have an increased risk of skin cancer. So getting followed by a dermatologist, having an aware auto, uh, hepatologist like Dr. Lambert, who is mindful of those things is always helpful. Um, but we want you to be careful out in the sun. We want you to wear the sun protective clothing. We also want you to wear the sunscreen. Try to do it every day and that'll reduce your risk. And I think those are excellent points, but those are also pretty uh, synonymous with what we've seen and heard before. Are there other things that dermatologists recommend that may not be common knowledge in terms of other medications or supplements that may be protective against some of these skin malignancies? That's really a great question. And out of Australia, there was a randomized trial that was done in the New England Journal of Medicine, where they had patients who had a high risk of skin cancer. And they took an over-the-counter supplement, which was just a B vitamin that you can get at any of the grocery stores here in town, anywhere in America. It's called nicotinamide or niacinamide. So it's not niacin, which is what we want. We don't want our patients to take niacin. We want them to take nicotinamide, also known as niacinamide. And the dose was at 500 milligrams twice a day. Most of these tablets are sold as 500 milligrams, so you're usually just taking one tablet twice a day. The good news is it's cheap, and also more good news is that this is a medicine with few side effects. It's just a B vitamin. If people take too much of it, it just passes out of your body. Gotcha. No, and that's excellent. And, and one last thing about vitamin D. You know, if, if I'm a, beyond being an autoimmune hepatitis patient, if I just wanted to get vitamin D from the sun, do we have any understanding of sun exposure and dose of vitamin D as a guy that may not want to take a supplement? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. So, and it all kind of depends on 
your skin and how much your skin color would let in some of the rays of the sun to make that vitamin D. So someone my skin color and darker might just need to be in the skin, excuse me, in the sun for 20 minutes, uh, three or four times a week, and that's it. It's really not that much. Someone who might be on the lighter and more fair side, um, for example, Dr. Lammer, might only need like eight or nine minutes, three or four times a week. Gotcha. No, that, that's great, and, and we appreciate your insight. We, we know vitamin D levels have been important in a number of autoimmune conditions. And in fact, we're fairly strong proponents of adequate vitamin D supplementation uh, with our patients, as we've seen patients with AIH, at least in two studies, have been associated with worse outcomes with low vitamin D. So not only with disease status of AIH, but also uh, COVID-19. So this information, uh, Dr. Anama, is, is really important. So we, we are really appreciative. Thank you for having me, and I really appreciate it. Thanks, Dr. Lammer. Great. Thank you.